Hey everybody, if you have a Soundcraft UI24 and you've been wondering how to connect it to Logic so you can multi-track, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Let's go! Okay, before we actually get started, I want to say this. The way that the Soundcraft UI24 handles its USB sends from the mixer to your computer is a little bit different than how other mixers in this price bracket do things. So if you're not super comfortable with how these things work, or if you're not super familiar with audio sort of in general, I'm going to suggest you watch our other video where we go in depth on what the USB sends are, what they're set aside for, and how to use it in conjunction with your DAW. Once you watch that video, come on back and check out this video. It'll probably make a lot more sense as we go through it. If you're choosing to move ahead anyway, or if you've just come back from watching the other video, I'll say that I'm not going to go super in depth on how the mixer is set up the way I did in the suggested video. I'm just gonna do the basics you need to get it working with your DAW. And then of course, I'm gonna talk about getting your DAW set up to send and receive signal. So now let's jump right into the mixer. The first thing we need to do is tell the mixer where to look for any information that's coming back from your DAW into your mixer. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can click on each individual channel in your mixer window, go up to the edit button, click on the patching tab, and then click on the USB DAW tab. And then you can choose any slot you want. You do not have to put slot one on channel one. You do not have to put slot two on channel two. If you wanna move things further down the line on your channel strips, you can do that. In this case, I'm gonna tell channel strip one to look on slot one. And I'm gonna click down here on channel two and tell it to look under slot two. And now if I go back to this main window, you can see that down at the bottom of channel one and channel two, it says underneath the fader, DAW1 and DAW2. So I know just by looking at it that anything coming out of output one and output two from my software coming back to the mixer, those are gonna show up on these two channel strips. So that's, that's the slow way to do it. The quick way you can do it is to come up and click on the cog, come over to your patching tab, click on USB DAW1 to 16, and then you can actually click through it like this. The other thing you can do is just hit patch one to one. If I hit this button, it will patch all of my channels, one to 16 and 17 to 32 that are coming back from the software onto the channel strips, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to 32. So let's click on that just to watch what happens. Do I wanna do it? Okay, yes. And you can see now that the first 16 channels have been patched. And if I click on this button, you can see the remaining channels have been patched. So let's jump back to the mixer. And now you can see, of course, each channel at the bottom is showing that it is getting its signal from the DAW returns. So this is great in getting it set up to receive. What do we have to do to get it to send signal out to our software? We don't actually have to do anything. All of our channels are automatically going out over USB to our software. The thing you have to remember, and it's very important, channel one going out of your mixer is not gonna show up at input one on your software. It's actually gonna show up at channel 11. So channel one is actually channel 11 in your software, channel two is actually channel 12 in your software, and so on, up the line. The reason for this is that the first 10 channels leaving your mixer on USB are set aside for your main bus and your aux buses. So channel one and two are holding the left and right from your master bus. And then three through 10 are holding the signal from your aux one through aux eight. This means that you can send signal through your main left right mix. If you have a mix going, you want that full mix to be captured in your software as well. You can set a couple of channels in your software to receive on channel one and two, and you'll get anything that's showing up on your master bus. 
And then of course, three through 10, the same thing. Anything you send into your auxes, one through eight, will now show up on channels three through 10 on your software. So when you really think about it, all you're doing is adding 10 to whatever channel you want to pull in on your software. If you have a microphone plugged into the physical channel number one on your mixer, you're going to tell the software to look on channel 11. So you've added 10. And if you plug a microphone or an instrument into the physical input channel two, add 10, that's 12. So you're going to tell your software to look on channel 12 to get anything that's plugged into channel two. And your physical inputs, 1 through 22, they are hard-coded to the numbers that I've just said. So 1 is 11, 2 is 12, 3 is 13, and all the way up the line. Those numbers are what they are, and you cannot change them. Okay, so that's great. We have our head wrapped around that a little bit, I hope. But looking at this mixer window here for the Soundcraft, you're going to see that, okay, we've got all of our input channels here set to be information coming back from our recording software. Well, what if I have a microphone that I want to plug in and use it and send to the software? Well, we need to set up a channel to do that too. So let's take our channel one here and let's change its input to be local one. So I have a microphone plugged in to one. I'm going to bring that microphone over. Check, check, check. You can see there's a little bit of blue signal here. Let's actually click gain. Let's bring this up. And now we've got some more signal. And if I bring this up, we're going to see that we've got green signal, meaning the channel is active. And we're seeing it on our master bus as well, on our main fader for left and right. If I pull this up a little bit more, we're going to hear it show up on the speakers in my room. You can hear it getting louder, hear it getting quieter. So we have signal here coming in from our microphone and the rest of our channels are set to returns from the software. Obviously, if you have more than one microphone or instrument that you want to use and send to your software, you just have to tell more channels where to look. So if I had another two microphones and I wanted them on channel strip two and three, I would click on channel strip two, click edit, local two, then click down here on three, local three. And now if we look, the channel strips have lost their indicator for being DAW. They are now just the regular physical inputs on your mixer. So really quickly, if I take my microphone out of channel one and plug that into channel two, you can now see I've got signal on channel two. Check, 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 check. Let's bring this up just a bit. Can we hear it? Yes, we can. And same thing if we take it out of two and plug it into three and do the same thing. Let's bring our gain up and bring this up. Check, 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 check. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. There you go. So that's how you set inputs for physical inputs and how you set returns coming from your software. Obviously, the next thing to do is look at our recording software and see how we set that up. All right, looking at our Mac, the first thing we want to do is open up audio MIDI setup just to make sure we're actually seeing the connection of our mixer to our Mac. So let's do that audio MIDI setup. You can open it the same way I just did, or if you have it down in your dock, this is what your icon looks like. And you just want to make sure that you're seeing your Soundcraft UI24. And what I always do whenever I have something plugged in that I'm going to use as my main interface, I right click on it and I click use this device for sound input and use this device for sound output. That way, even if I'm not multi-tracking, I'm just using it for daily in and out of my computer. This is now the device that's going to take over for both of those functions. Once we know we see it, once we've got it set the way we want, we can actually close this. And the next thing we want to do, obviously, is open Logic. So when your first Logic window comes up, what you should do first is make sure that Logic is seeing the same thing we just saw in Audio MIDI setup. So you're going to come up to Logic Pro, 
go to settings, go to audio, and you want to make sure that core audio is enabled. And for your output device and input device, you want to find your Soundcraft UI24. Make sure that's selected, click apply, and then you can close this window. Now we know Logic is looking at the right device for sound input and output. So the next thing we want to do is create a project. So let's do an empty project. And now we get to choose what kind of uh, input we're going to bring in. Is it going to be audio? Is it going to be a drummer? Pattern? MIDI? I think in most cases, you're probably going to want to choose audio, mic, or line. And then under details, you're going to choose your audio input and output to start with. Remember I said, anything coming from the mixer and going to the software, if you're using your physical inputs, they start on channel 11. So you're going to want to choose 11 as your first one. And if you choose the ascending button, any additional channels that you create will go up by a single digit increment starting at 11. And for audio output, you're going to do the same thing. Choose your output, go down to mono. But remember, everything coming back from the software to the mixer, that does actually start on one. So if we set our output to one as our first and then click ascending, we know that any additional channels we add are going to have the next value added to that output channel. So now we can tell it how many channels we want to make. So let's make 10. Hit enter. Let's look at our other window, our mixer window here. And you can see we have 10 audio input channels right here. And if we look at the inputs, look, they're set 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way up to 20. And our outputs are set 1 to 10. So we set it to the right input. We set it to the right output. And by choosing ascending, it automatically routed the channel inputs and channel outputs for us. So now that we've done this, we've told the session which device to look at, we've told the session where to start our inputs and where to start our outputs, we're actually ready to record from our mixer into the software. If I come over to this window and I record enable it, I can do it from here too. I'm just showing you both windows, um, but I also want to click in here. Let's make this just a little smaller actually. Let's just choose a random spot here. I'm going to turn that off. And with our first channel record enabled, which is looking at 11, we make sure we've got our microphone plugged into channel 1 because channel 1, physical channel input 1, goes to 11. If I actually hit record, we should get a recording going. You can see there's already signal here from my microphone. So let's just do a quick test record to make sure. A check, 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 one, two, check, one, two, recording through this microphone. Now let's test playback. Okay, so we've got signal here. Let's play it back. Okay, we're seeing it go out of our stereo out in our second window, but we're not hearing it. Why? Well, that's because we didn't tell any of our channels right now to look for output one. Originally we did, but we changed our first three channels in this window. So we need this to come back somewhere. So let's choose channel four. Let's come up to edit, go to USB DAW, and let's change it from slot four to slot one. Now, if I come back to logic and I go to the start here and press play. Now let's test playback. We now have that signal coming check, check, back. Check one, two, check one, two, recording through this microphone. Now let's test playback. Okay, so we've seen what we need to do for our inputs and outputs on the mixer, and we've seen how we need to set up the session. Really quickly, I'm just going to simplify the view on the mixer side of things, just so there's less channels to look at, just to make it a little bit less confusing. Okay, here we are with a simplified view. We've only got three channels, one, two, and three. These literally could have been any channel strips we wanted. I'm just choosing one, two, three for the sake of simplicity. So you can see there's still signal on channel strip one. That's because this is our microphone and it's picking me up. 
channel strip two and three are still currently set to be physical inputs two and three, but we're gonna change that. We're gonna use these to bring signal back because remember I said you can bring signal from your DAW back onto any channel strip you want. So let's choose two, click edit, DAW slot one. Let's do channel three and do slot two. I could again bring these back on any slots I wanted, but we're gonna do one and two. So right now, channel strip one is our microphone and by default is sending information to channel 11 in our recording software. Let's jump back over to Logic. And right now, Audio 1, where we have our signal coming in, where we did our recording, if we play this back, it's sending out on output 1. So we would see it on our channel strip 2 in our mixer. Let's, let's try that. Let's turn recording off. Let's hit play. And we can see signal. Microphone, now let's test playback. And check, there check it is. One, two, check one, two, recording through this microphone. Now let's test playback. Check, check one, two. Okay, so we know that's coming back. Well, what if we want to bring it back on um, our channel strip three as well? We can do a couple of different things. We can change this output to be output mono number two so then if i hit play we can see now it's coming back this microphone now let's test playback on the other channel or what we can do is we could actually change this output on channel one in our software to be a stereo output the first stereo output is channel one and two together so if i do that and hit play we are now going to see information come back on both of these channels at the same time. There they are. Recording through this there's microphone. one. There's check, the check other. One, two, check. And if we really want to, we can link these channels. Now let's test playback. Check, check, one, two. Check, so now, one, two. Recording through this microphone. Now those two channel strips are acting like a stereo channel one, pair. Now let's test playback. There you go. Signal from our mixer to our DAW, signal from our DAW back to our mixer. I know it was a little bit complicated. And if you made it all the way here and you're still not really sure what was going on, I'm going to recommend you watch our other video where we go in depth on how the USB sends are handled by this mixer, what those certain sends are set aside for, and it'll probably make a lot more sense. Anyway, with all that aside, I hope this video was interesting entertaining, educational. If it was any of those three things, please like, share, subscribe. And of course, you can check us out on Patreon, or you can do a super thanks down below, or even join this channel down below. And that helps us to grow our channel. Anyway, until we see you next time, thanks for watching here on Quick and Easy Quickies. Bye.